Hello everyone and welcome to what is probably the best game that was played yesterday in the Skilling Open Knockout section. It's Wesley So versus Tamar Rajabov and it, uh, it's the thir third game between the two of them. Uh, first game was won by Rajabov with the black pieces, second game ended in a draw and this is now the third one. It's really, really an awesome game, a lot of you have already suggested it. Uh, so let's dive straight into it. Wesley uh, has the white piece and he really needs a win to bounce back in this match. Opens with uh, C4, so the English opening is on the board. Sorry about that. Uh, and we have e5, uh, sorry, not e5, knight to f6 by Rajabov. Uh, we have knight to c3, e5, and now knight to f3 and knight to c6. So the four knights opening uh, of, the, of the English. We have e3 uh, and now bishop to b4 challenging this knight. Bishop to c2, uh, that's a queen, obviously. <laughs> queen to c2 defending. Uh, and now castles by black. And here, knight to d5. And while it looks like... Um, Maybe you can double up white pawns. Problem is after this knight moves, uh, then this pawn is no longer defended. So instead we have rook to e8. Now the pawn is defended, but now queen to f5. And again, uh, what do you play here? Uh, if you go knight captures on d5 now to double the pawns, you don't really uh, you don't really gain all that much uh, uh, because after captures on knight e7, you're just gonna go with queen captures on e5. So uh, it's it's the same stuff. So here d6 challenging the queen now defending the e5 pawn and here knight captures an f6 with check. So here we have a a very very quick queen trade but uh, this game is extremely wild even without queens. So captures, captures and captures and here a3 challenging the bishop. And this is all very standard theory of this uh, line in this uh, English opening because there are over 100 games in the database with this exact same uh, position. Uh, from uh, top tier tournament play. Uh, we have bishop back to c5 and now b4 grabbing more space on the queen side. Bishop to b6, uh, luckily uh, your bishop cannot be trapped as this pawn guards the c5 square and bishop to b2 now. Uh, Wesley continues developing uh, and here uh, most of the games in the database continue with pawn to a5 but here uh, Rajabov plays a6 and uh, it is as of move 12 that we have a completely new game. So this is basically where, where our game starts. Uh, we have queenside castle by white preparing d4 at some point and bishop to f5. Now this bishop is going to be uh, uh, gonna be really awesome here uh, controlling this entire diagonal not allowing uh, the, the white king to go king to b1 and white needs to be very careful here uh, and here you could continue with something like uh, d4 right away you could uh, start developing your bishop but here we have rook to g1 probably probably with the idea that uh, maybe at some point you can play g4 g5 and uh, open up the g file with your with your dark square bishop controlling this diagonal uh, could be useful at some point uh, so here knight back to e7 nicely guarding the d5 and the f5 squares uh, and finally d4 now by white with bishop to e4 uh, and now comes knight to d2 challenging the bishop here we have bishop back to g6 and now comes knight back to f3 c5 here looks very strong but of course the black will not capture and allow uh well th this bishop to be uh blocked out of the game because just bishop a7 and now although this could be fine for white uh, in a rapid game you, you don't know if you've maybe overextended a, 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 li a little too much and will you be able to hold everything together so here knight back to f3 uh, and we have a5, uh, busting open the queen side now. As the king is on the queen side, you, you want to have some files open for your rook. So, of course, uh, Wesley uh, prevents that. He goes b5 and now c6. So, Rajabov now will try to open up the c file. Uh, we have a4, captures here, and now a captures on b5, keeping the c file closed. Uh, but there's a problem as, uh, for the moment, you have a backwards c4 pawn and uh, it's not going to be... Uh, it's not going to be all that pleasant. So here, a4. A very important move as it, uh, well, prepares a3, but also uh, opens up the dark square bishop for this diagonal. And with the dark square bishop on this diagonal and the light square bishop on this diagonal, uh, you can see that the white king doesn't have all that many squares to, uh, to go to. So here, bishop to a3, stopping this pawn from going any further. And now e captures on d4. We have captures. And now uh, a beautiful, beautiful uh, a signature Rajab of move knight to d5. Uh, a brilliant sacrifice that really shows just how powerful the position is uh, from black's perspective. Uh, because if you capture the knight, rook a to c8 is just uh, crushing. Because the, the bishop still controls this diagonal. You have to go to b2, now rook c2 check. 
king to b1 and now this rook to d2 check checking the king attacking the rook and if you want to defend the rook king c1 now comes rook to a2 and now the bishop is attacked uh, the bishop still slices all the way here and there is no good defense against rook to c8 which just uh, ends the game so this is what would happen uh should uh, should wesley accept the knight sacrifice so here uh, for the moment the knight is is immortal uh, we have king to b2 and now comes bishop to a5 here R rajabov again offers the knight uh, but still the the knight cannot be captured if you capture it now or rather you you can capture it but after rook a to c8 it's uh very very hard to spot uh, how how you will deal with this the bishop pair is still fully operational you could go for something like rook to c1 but after captures and captures and the other rook coming to c8 it's still going to be uh, incredibly difficult for for white to play this there is one move that actually allows you to capture on d5 but it's uh, very hard to find captures and then after rook 8 to c8 you go rook to d3 and now uh, you've blocked the light square bishop you don't allow this uh, rook to come to c2 but still it's uh uh, uh difficult to find difficult to cal of, of course uh, i do imagine wesley thought of it but it's very hard to calculate and you don't know what's happening the rook will come to c4 you, you're gonna double up uh, on the c file and uh, it, it's just very tricky playing against the bishop pair when you are low on time so here instead we have bishop captures on d6 grabbing that d6 pawn uh, but now just knight to c3 challenging the rook here rook to c1 and now knight to e4 and again uh, what do you play here as white the the bishop is under attack the f2 pawn is under attack so here bishop back to g3 uh stopping both threats and now uh well you could play something like bishop to b4 to just prepare a3 uh rajavov plays it right away and this is just beautiful uh you don't want to capture the pawn if you capture bishop d2 opens up a discovered check wins the rook on c1 so here after a3 check king to a2 was played by wesley and now comes knight to c3 with check forcing the the king to capture the pawn uh or you you don't capture you can go something like king to b2 but then it's just uh, then it's just weird you allow this pass pawn to go uh, all the way to a2 and then it's uh, gonna be very hard so here king captures on a3 it is in fact the the top move recommended by the engine and now comes bishop to b4 with check now rajabov sacrifices a bishop for some very sneaky play and the bishop must be captured uh, because everything else ends in uh not just a checkmate but but such a remarkable checkmate that i will have to show it for example king b3 if you decline the sacrifice you get knight to a2 attacking the rook and the bishop here and now if you want to keep everything together let's say rook to a1 uh rook to a3 with check king to b2 and now bishop to c3 with check sacrificing the rook here only move as the bishop covers uh, this diagonal and uh, the knight covers c1 is to capture the rook and now the incredible bishop to c2 now the bishop pair controls uh, these four squares and there is no defense against the rook to a8 checkmate uh, you can capture the knight but still rook to a8 is checkmate as the bishop pair is not allowing the king to go anywhere it's not a completely forced line uh it, it, it only happens if the rook goes to a1 but uh, I, I just showed it uh, for you to see what what uh, what is possible here but every line is completely losing for black for white if you play it like this so here king captures on b4 it is the only move that uh, allows white not to lose and now knight to a2 with check and here wesley has to decide what to do and the point is he's very low on time i think he was around 20 seconds on the clock here maybe even lower uh, and he needs to decide whether to go king to b3 or king to c5 and here wesley played king to c5 saying that uh, uh okay maybe maybe i can do some damage here the thing uh if he went king to b3 then it's fine but it's very hard to find and uh, when i say fine I mean uh, possible possible to defend because here after knight captures on c1 king b2 knight goes to e2 only square if you don't want to lose the knight but now after captures and captures with check king b3 you get rook a to a2 and it's still a very uh, ugly position to play uh, black is up the exchange but white has this massive pawn pawn chain here so it's going to be it's going to be pretty crazy 
However, after this knight to a2 check, Wesley said, you can have the rook. I'm playing king c5. I'm going to play king b6. I'm going to capture this pawn here. I'm going to have three connected pass pawns. And with the bishop covering the b8 square, I don't have to worry about your rooks checking me uh, from the eighth rank. However, uh, this is now completely losing as uh, Rajabov is on the move. Uh, feel free to pause the video and win the game for Rajabov uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, finishing this game in great style. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, it's Rook to E6. And now uh, there is nothing more for you to play here. Uh, you've cut off the king completely. The king cannot come to uh, here. The knight guards that square. The rook covers uh, the entire sixth rank. And now, well, the B6 is just too big of a threat. For example, if you play something like rook to a1, just b6 check, king d5, and now everything is checkmate. Knight c3 is checkmate, knight b4 is checkmate, bishop to e4 is checkmate. You can, you know, choose your checkmate. Uh, everything is checkmate. It's, I mean, this is crazy. Like, all of these moves are, are checkmate. It's uh, not, not very often that you will see something like this. So, of course, Wesley said, okay, I cannot allow b6. So, he played b6 himself. Now, black cannot play b6. But now, instead of winning in three moves, uh, Rajabov can win in one move. And I'm sure you will see it without even pausing the video. Uh, rook to a5. And this is now checkmate. Uh, so, it was mate in one. But uh, whatever Wesley played, it would be... It would be incredibly difficult to defend. So knight covers this. This uh, entire 5th uh, rank is covered. 6th rank is covered. And the king has nowhere to go. So a very nice rook a5 checkmate on move 31. Uh, the, after this rook to e6, you could continue the struggle with something like bishop to d6. It allows you to, to kind of prolong the game. But it's only prolonging it. It's not uh, nothing serious. And of course, white will still lose. So, incredible game by Rajabov uh, constantly offering that knight on e5. And as this is already the second game uh, he won in the match. So, from three games, uh, two wins by Rajabov, one game is a draw. Uh, the first match is won by Rajabov. So, Wesley will get his chance to counter back in today's match. Uh, and we'll see how it goes. And we're just going to uh, show, the, show the standings here. So, these are the results of uh, yesterday's clashes. Let me just make that a little bit bigger. So Magnus Carlsen defeated Anish Giri after three draws. He was able to win one game. Uh, I thought about showing it, but uh, it was a, it was a pretty boring game. Uh, and especially since uh, they played the Italian game and Giri did not go for the Evans Gambit, I decided uh, you know, best not to show it. Uh, Levan Aronen defeated Jan Nepomniši with two and a half uh, to one and a half. Uh, Rajabov defeated Wesley So two and a half to half as only three games were played. And Maxim Vashelagra was uh, better than uh, Hikaru Nakamura winning the first game. Then Nakamura had had a chance to bounce back, but uh, and Maxim defended well and uh, he, he won the match. So we're going to see what happens today. Will we see... Uh, will we see, uh, you know, the, the the people who lost to come back into the match, or will it be uh, a one-sided uh, one-sided uh, brawl? Uh, so yeah, uh, that's uh, that's the game. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, a lot of you have requested it, and for ve very good reasons, as it is a beautiful attacking game. Always uh, always nice to see a job of crushing everyone with the black pieces. It's it's definitely his style. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Soria Bodat, uh, Peter Paul Vassalo, Klaus Moller Nielsen, uh, Jonathan Mani, and Clayton Miller for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon continuing the coverage of the knockouts, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and uh, whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.